Hello YouTube, welcome back. Well, didn't really do much, didn't do much for the Friday e video. Uh, I've been dealing with all this um, eye issues and stuff and I'd really like to thank everybody that has been supporting me. Uh, a lot of people saying, you know, praying for me and so my eye gets better. And uh, a little, little update of what's going on. Um, my retina did tear, so they went in and they fused it and um, that fixed the tear. Uh, basically what happened is the the vitreous that's on the front of your retina had liquefied and it starts to peel away from your uh, retina and they said it's very common then you get them floaters in your eyes in the process of that happening it basically had made a tear into my retina and uh, when they fixed it basically all that stuff created another shadow in my eye and they're watching that and they said that hopefully that just heals itself up over time so they're going to keep a good watch on that so but yeah that's basically what happened I, I went through this back in 1995 I lost part of my left eye due to retina detachment so I only got peripheral vision in my left eye so my right eye is my prominent eye so that's why everything is so important to get this fixed correctly so we basically when we were done sawing we didn't uh, get a chance to film anything else but we're going to work on uh, we had hit that um, that screw or a nail, I gotta dig that out, find out what it is. So we're gonna replace some saw bits. Um, there was, I think we had four, four badly damaged ones. Uh, I think everything else is real good. Basically, if the saw bit is damaged on the shoulders or, or outer edges, you call it a shoulder, um, they need to be replaced because that's what makes your full curve. That's your full path. So we'll go ahead and uh, identify which ones need replaced, and I'm going to see if I can dig out that piece of metal and find out what we actually did hit. So uh, let's go ahead and get started, and then also we're going to go over and look at a couple logs that we're going to be sawing on possibly the next video. So let's get, let's get to work here. Okay, here we are at the saw blade, and what I like to do is go around the blade, piece of chalk, now here's an obvious one, so try to pick your, now here's one that's broke in the middle, it's got two good shoulders on it, but we're going to, I think that was one of the ones we had fixed, we planned on fixing, um, I think there was four real bad ones. Now this got an outer shoulder, that might have been the fourth one really didn't take too much damage for hitting something like a screw. I'll have to dig that piece out of the log. So let's just go with um, let's go with the uh, one that's had the broken little shoulder. Boy that's not even enough to fool with really. So let's just start with these two, or these three. I thought we was going to do four. Basically what you need is you need a saw wrench. Um, there are different patterns and styles of teeth. This happens to be a um, F pattern. And I'm hoping that what I'm filming here is going to be visible. I'm trying to get behind the camera here and look at what you might actually see. So basically Get the saw wrench down. There's a hole in the shank that lines up with the wrench. And they do give you this special, this special little uh, little piece of metal goes through there and locks it. So with the jerking motion, you want to spin that up out, pull your pin out. Now you can get your bit and there it is and that's the worst one out of the whole saw so that's not bad um, now what you want to do is you want to inspect your shank some people call these rings but they're technically called a shank wipe out the grooves make sure everything's clean look for any other damage at this point i know there was no other damage because the bit was still intact so what i like to use is good old three-in-one oil and these are hard to open for some reason and just you want to work them in with 
a little bit of light oil because you will be removing these again someday so basically get your your bit and your shank and put them together like y'all now what we're going to do is we're going to start it back into the saw and what I had always found out that works good if you try to get it on with your wrench right now you're going to have uh, possibly this thing falling so I just give it a, just a little tap not on the carbide now that should give you enough clearance and now if you're going to align that seems like it's lining up pretty good with the shank we're going to sneak this down back into the Here's where it gets a little tricky. These F's are uh, kind of a pain to get uh, to get the wrench back down in. Oh, I didn't seat that down far enough. It needs to go back a little bit more. Of course, when you turn the camera on, let me just see if I can get it to wind back. There we go. Yeah, the wrench is uh, sometimes can be a little tricky. I think we're in far enough that time. They do make a speed wrench. They're expensive. I don't change enough bits out. Get that back through. And then the same thing, a little jerking motion. And this is a new blade with new shanks and uh, it's going to be a little bit tighter than an old blade it's a little bit loose now you make sure this is seated down all the way which we got it in the last step is I just use my saw wrench and a couple of uh, couple taps on there and that they call that seating the shank um, yeah it's nice and flush and you want to take your time. Now we'll go to this next one. After you do a few, you get a technique. Okay. Same thing. Because we're going to be sawing uh, pine two by fours. Same thing, a little bit of oil. And these are Piper's bits. I had them on hand. These are actually uh, dominators that came with the saw made by Simons. Um, they sit at the same height. There should be no problem. And again, with this retina, everything's sort of foggy for me right now. But yeah, I just want to get that started so it starts to roll back. There it goes. And slowly wind it back. A couple good jerks on it. And that oil helps it too. And the same thing. A couple little taps down in there. Check it for clearance. Everything's nice and straight. And you can see this black. Everybody was questioning about that. That is the reaction with the oak. The tannic acid in the oak literally causes that uh, saw plate to turn black like that. But I spray it down with WD-40 when we're done sawing, and the first log or two, that'll just get polished right back off. So let's go our third tooth here. I'm not really in a good position to be working. I'm sort of trying to do this so I have a good camera angle for everybody. And 
And technically I should have been working these back the other way because you can see the potential for uh, damage. So if you're gonna be replacing a whole saw, you sort of wanna work this way so the new tooth's always in front of you. That way, if you come back with the wrench and click, you, you snap off a tip. And uh, I just didn't do that. Sorry. One more bit. But the B patterns, you don't really need to try to start them with the tapping them. They, they sort of, uh, what am I doing here? There we go. <laughs> like I said, you're just tapping on the top of the, you're not, you're not touching the carbide. You're doing no damage. And again, if you got to align them, now's the time. There it is. It's aligned. Come on, get down below. That didn't go back just enough. Let's give it a little bit more. You can see that the opening on that thing just, okay, there it goes. You have to start it back. The speed wrenches, I don't think you have to worry about it. Again, it's not that often wherever changing bits out if you look the way the wrench is designed here you can see it it, it has an offset so it, it sort of stays away from the uh, actual next tooth and I think we were on this one kind of lost track there we're going to seat it and that should be it so we'll just uh just take a quick gander around here that one right there i don't think i'm going to worry about it just such a small amount if i keep spinning this belt's going to knock you guys off of here i'm actually feeding the um, conveyor belt frontwards I think we did all right this one has just a slight in the middle the shoulders are still good we're gonna leave that one alone because they will hit rocks we're not living in a perfect world up here I don't know if we've been almost all the way around One just a slight. We're going to leave that one alone. That'll grind out. I think we're good. All right. Let's go take a walk over to Log Pile. I'll show you what our next uh, pretty pretty decent sized pine log so let's go take a look at that and uh, we'll wrap this video up all right there is our pine logs that we're going to turn into two by fours hopefully this weekend this is a real nice pine log this one here is kind of a monster uh, it actually is a nicer log than this one if we're going to make two by fours I don't think we're going to try this one because look, look at the size of them knots some of them knots got to be Oh, heck, six, eight inches. This one here is bad enough. But these are the two by fours that go into the, um, they burn them up during the heat while they're making steel. So it really don't matter. Um, but this is actually a nice log. Uh, hopefully the metal detector don't find nothing in it. I don't got a tape measure with me, but uh, you can see, you can see how high it comes up on me, so. You know that these are some very decent sized logs. So let's take a look at that chunk of wood to come off the mill and uh, 
eventually I'm going to take it back to my shop and try to find that piece of metal that's in it. So we'll talk to you then. All right, there is the whatever it was. I'm going to dig it out when I get back to my shop and uh, just turn these bits so you can see the damage done. But that's the way that works. Uh, you can't win them all. And again, there's, there's the pile of lumber. Eddie hadn't uh, took it out of there yet. Uh, but I'd say a good solid 600 feet out of that. It was a pain to do. But uh, but anyhow, uh, I really, really appreciate everybody's concern about my eye. Um, things are getting better. Uh, it's going to take some time for it to get back to where I'd like it to be. But uh, you got to have patience when stuff like that happens to you. So... I wanted to give you some sort of a Friday e video, and we will be back sawing again on this weekend. Uh, I think we have some visitors coming out. Uh, I believe uh, Timothy Barr is coming out to say hi to us, and we'll see him on Saturday. And other than that, that's all i got to say, and thanks again for coming along, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.